Thanks for um, getting together on a Friday and uh, starting something with me. Here we go. Yeah. How about, um, how, how about that change, huh? Have you guys uh, talked about change yet? No, no. We, we honestly hopped on and talked about the only change we've talked about is the change in Mitchie's state from normal <laughs> to food poisoned. <laughs> <laughs> Which is a good point because you know what? So we're going to just like roll right into this, right? And, you know, we don't know what it is. We got three hosts. And I said, I mean, look at me. I don't know what I'm doing. (laughs) Wolfgang doesn't know what he's doing. Mitchie doesn't know what he's doing. I don't know what I'm doing. But um, But we're doing it. And that's the most important part of change is doing the things you actually want to do. Yeah. Because it's not a matter of should. It's a matter of must. Boom. <laughs> Done. All right, let's put a pin in it. This is over. Podcast over. Right. Let's go. There you right. guys go. You heard it first. <laughs> All right. So to get started, do you think we should quickly tell people just like like where we are? You know, just where in the world we are. I'm, I'm like wondering how can we quickly say who we are without that taking, you know, like Five an hours. hour. So you're saying, hey, Mitch, I figure out how to say it in one minute and not 10 minutes like I, or 15 like last time. Gotcha. Yes, yes. Can we Thanks introduce ourselves? But here's the thing, Wolfgang, you got to start. All right. Uh, hi, I'm Wolfgang. I love art and creative stuff so much so that I like, like to sit next to people when they do creative stuff like painting and just fucking talk to them because it's so cool. And I even started a fucking podcast about that and you should go check it out. Um, what else? I also make video games. I started writing a book like a few years ago and I still haven't written the first page. Um, I have more knowledge packed into this brain than you can possibly imagine. And you're going to discover most of it throughout this podcast and all this bullshit happening. Um, what can I say? I'm a vibe. What about you, Chase? (laughs) (laughs) That was beautiful. Damn. Well, if someone um, doesn't know who I am and they're listening to this, because right, this is just this podcast is just going to appear in their feed with a new name. But previously, I was hosting a podcast called Fitness Forever, whatever, um, a health and fitness show for normal people. And now I'm just embodying that normal person life after years of being in a band, being a personal trainer, running a bunch of my own businesses. Right now, I'm just like embracing that normal life and doing instructional design. So where Wolfgang just like listed all this cool ass, you know, deep creative endeavors he's into, I'm just shoving all of that deep down into the recesses of my being and just putting on my uh, everyday Todd face, getting in my cubicle and doing my thing. Uh, But meanwhile, talking about important ideas right here with uh this is this is just uh now as a salary man this podcast is secretly just chase's uh, weekly therapy for free <laughs> yes yes this is my therapy <laughs> this is actually before wolfgang and mitchy came around i every week i would just turn on a microphone and talk to myself and just explain everything going wrong <laughs> so uh, now i have two sounding boards which is great <laughs> mitchy who are you love it I am food poisoned, boys. <laughs> uh, so I would like to say that I am a person who enjoys lifting heavy weights or, or light weights um, in return for the amazing feeling that there is to um that there is to have from having a fit body. And I like to teach others the amazingness of lifting weights as well. And also incorporating some healthy nutrition and all of that. And that's where I'm at right now. Really healthy nutrition. Not, I I wouldn't (laughs) say really healthy because look at me right now. (laughs) That is my point. (laughs) <laughs> you gotta you gotta risk it you gotta you know you know what to do and, and then you deviate and then Dude, you but, pay for it and it makes me think like 
is everyone feeling this way? <laughs> like, <laughs> is, is everyone food poisoned all the time? Dude, like, because yeah. I used to eat out a lot and I probably felt like this all the time. I just don't realize it until now because I've, I've kind of cleaned it up in many ways, like my lifestyle. Yeah, yeah. When, you're, when you're under immense amount of pain all the time, it becomes regular. Yeah. I mean, imagine if you had like five rocks in your shoe and you just got used to it and then mm-hmm. you took those rocks out and then one rock finds its way back in your shoe. You're like, oh, I'm not doing that again. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm very aware of the rocks in my shoe the same way that you're aware of the, you know, maybe the toxins in your diet. For sure. For sure. <laughs> and it sucks when those rocks are in your shoes. Oh, it sucks because, you know, it's kind of like being sick, man. When you're not sick, you forget how bad it is to be sick. Dude, it's so true. So I messaged, we're we're in this group, and I proposed a topic idea, which I think is kind of relevant if it's early in 2022, which is just like the vague thing because like I'm just seeing so many people um, talk to me about like setting goals and like trying to change. And the question that I just posed to you guys that I think we can just elaborate on is can people change? And if so, how? Uh, I think not only can people change themselves, but I think change is a force of fucking nature and it happens just like time. And you're either with it and you go along with it or you resist it and end up absolutely miserable. So To me, a more important question is, how do you change? Um, How do you change in a healthy way and in a way that resonates with you and makes you live the life you truly want? And I can go into that answer after I hear both of you's takes on the original question, because I will just run this train. (laughs) (laughs) Otherwise. So what do you guys think? Is change a thing? What do you think, Mitchie? Um, no, change doesn't exist, boys. <laughs> He's still a <laughs> hockey player. He just has. Sorry, <laughs> sorry. Still, sorry. Still change, change is not possible in this life that you're set with. Sucks, dick. <laughs> hey this shows my mental state and perspective of being a poisoned human right now that's true true no i'm just kidding Life yeah is change, dude i i guess the question that comes to mind for me is is change ever easy i think under the right circumstances yes you think yes i think that when you work towards changing, how do I put this? Bucket lists, right? People make bucket lists because somewhere deep down inside them, the thing they want to do on that list, you know, there's, there's something in the subconscious being like, I got to do this in life. It could be anything, but it's that specific list of things for everyone individually. And I think subconsciously that comes from a desire to change and improve and become the best version of yourself. So I think when you truly go towards change that you resonate with, that becomes almost effortless. There will be incoming stress from other factors. Um, Like you want to go on a safari for three weeks, you're going to have to come back and figure out what you're going to eat because you didn't have a job for three weeks, right? Or whatever, stuff like that, which I think, Ch- uh, not Chase, uh, Mitch, you've had a lot of experience with that adaptability, right? Adapting to every situation you've been in and the travel and all that stuff. Um, yeah, Chase, yeah, Chase, you haven't. But I yeah. think... <laughs> Zero. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I think um, if, you're, if that change is, is imposed over you, you're supposed to fit this corporate lifestyle or this thing or this thing that like this other thing that doesn't fit with what you resonate with. I think that change will be absolutely miserable. It will be a miserable process and the result of it will probably be just as miserable, if not more, just anguishing overall. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so Wolfgang, the first thing you said 
was that change is like time and that it's one of the fundamental laws. And I think that that speaks a lot to what I've been thinking about, which is how a lot of people say the only constant in life is change. But I think what they're referring to there is the only constant in your external environment is change. Like everything around people is changing. And then how Mitchy, you said, um, is change easy. I feel like the environment is always changing and allowing easy internal change is an easy way to wind up changing in ways that deteriorate you. Whereas if you look at these external changes and take the hard way to change internally in response to them, then you put yourself in a road towards, you know, integration rather than disintegration. Maybe like, you know, like there's change, but there's growing change and there's a destructive change. And it's like the world's always changing. How do we find balance and change with it appropriately? Or do we change at all? Is it just the world changing around us and we just stay like a rock? And, um, you know, time goes by and time reveals that nothing happened to you. You just let external factors adjust around you like some sort of weird stoic non-doer. There's a lot of ideas right there. <laughs> well, um, if, if uh, change is only external, then that to me implies that we're not part of the whole like natural thing happening, which... I mean, I guess prove me wrong, someone out there <laughs> that were not part of nature. <laughs> I, I would love to see that. I would, I would love to put a human in a in a complete vacuum or whatever, and you just they like never grow up or whatever. They never develop in a way that would be monumental. Well, obviously. it's not only that. It's what would they eat if they weren't a part of nature? You know, <laughs> like you would be eating pop tarts and and which. <laughs> a big portion of the u.s population is and that goes to show why we have such high rates of disease and obesity as well because the more you disconnect from nature and this goes off topic of change but i just want to throw it in there it's like the more disconnected <laughs> we are with nature the more disease is formed and everything like that the the more we're sitting the less we're walking like the, it's it's all rooted in disconnection from nature Agree. Yeah, but yeah, I mean, you can't UV spell uh, you can't spell popul po population without pop tarts. So. <laughs> That's true. That's true. So UV lights tarts without population. Exactly. <laughs> they're, they're they're intertwined. There's no division there. They're united. <laughs> no, no. But I think that that point alone says that you know humans are not separate from nature. If if the only constant is change externally. And that's probably reflected internally as well. I mean, we're always changing. Um, to me, I just think it's a like you like when you pose that question of is change ever easy? I think yes. And when it's easy, it could be easily destructive. In what yeah. way? Um, well, it's the easily pop destructive part. <laughs> oh, I see. Yeah, but, if, but what are you changing there? What are you changing? Um. You're changing your habits and behaviors in easy ways. Uh, you know, changes your life. Gotcha. Yeah. Like if you just want to look at the entire human population from, uh, you know, from the past, let's say 200 years, we slowly changed towards comfort. So there's like a big evolutionary change towards uh, the easier path which you could just look at people and say, is this push towards comfort causing them to feel more meaning, fulfillment, happiness, whatever. They're definitely more comfortable. Yeah. It's funny because it's we're possibly the most comfortable we've ever been in known history. And I think probably also the most stressed we've ever been in, in known history. Yeah. <laughs> So is it is it comfort in the end? I don't know. Well, yeah, that's that's, that's a good point. Um, I guess it makes me ask another question: Is like, if you're not growing, are you changing? Because like, are you able to change for the worse? Like, is that possible? Yeah, I think so. You think? Uh, yeah. Well, first of all, if we look at it as a force of nature, you can look at it as every other force of nature. So rain can be good and increase crop productivity and all that, but it can also cause floods 
it brings change either way, right? So like like Chase said, I think that is destructive change. I could just fucking go grab a pack of cigarettes and just start smoking a pack a day. That's change. <laughs> and it's not going to be for the better. <laughs> That's for sure. <laughs> right? Yeah. Like, like, I think that there are certain aspects of your character that maybe don't necessarily change, but just either flourish or uh, or, you know, they either aid wither. in your flourishment or, or wither away, whatever. Yeah, whatever you want to call that. Um, whereas, like, say I am uh, I, eager, enthusiastic, curious, like a- all accurate statements, I could either water that into me being an enthusiast of different things and sharing knowledge and, and do, doing it productively, or it could deteriorate into some sort of escapism where I just have my hands in too many different projects and don't actually accomplish anything because i'm just like running away from um going deep you know so so like there's there's a i could feed either one of those aspects of my personality i think and that that's like growth or deterioration both both of which are change right if you're curious you can be like i'm gonna go learn about i don't know some topic that i'm deeply interested in like underwater Um, basket weaving exactly or i can just be like oh look at the newest instagram post i'm curious about that obviously one of them is going to lead to good change and one of them is probably not going to do much for you so i don't start fucking with your dopamine and all that jazz right 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 yeah Yeah, the dopamine that damn dopamine (laughs) <laughs> a whole 10 episodes on that <laughs> yeah uh, so i guess it makes me ask the question is growth possible without change i don't think so but let me think about it what do you, what does it mean to you when you say growth okay so i'll relate it since i'm coming from a fitness and nutrition background i'll relate it to this so let's say you found a routine a certain amount of sets and reps and weight that works really, really well for you. Um, But after like four weeks, then your body starts to get really used to that. And so your body starts to tell you, Hey, it's time to mix it up. Let's, let's switch the reps. Let's switch the sets. Let's switch the the rest time in between. And then you change. uh, If you do take into account of what your body's saying to you, And then you start to build new muscles and start to grow in those ways because you were able to change. But I'm I'm guilty of this and so are a lot of other people in the gym is they stick with something too long to where it starts to go downhill. You, You know what I mean? And so their resistance to change because something worked for them for so long is actually the number one thing that's keeping them from growing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Dude, I love that you're in here yes, still. In they're the- still changing, right? The yeah. resistance to change just makes them change for the worst. So, yeah. Anyway, it's, Chase, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I just, I love that you're in here with the foot in the fitness store, like, like heavy, like you're literally personal <laughs> training, which I love because I think there's no metaphor for so many other things, like the metaphor of that uh, fitness health pursuit. I mean, you can't separate like physical and mental health anymore. And, um, you know, you know, the resistance to change, what I've learned in that field is, is that what makes you grow today isn't the same thing that makes you grow tomorrow. Like, I think if we look at ourselves and uh, physically or mentally, you know, the landmark book that you read that changed your life, you could read it again, but it won't change you in quite the same way. Whereas like the groundbreaking fitness routine that you adopted that changed your physique like crazy worked really well or adjusting your diet worked really well. But after you are in it for too long, if you want to go to the next level, then you need to change some variables. You need to read a different book. You need to adjust your diet. You need to change your uh, workout, but it's knowing when to change Mm -hmm. (laughs) because the change is going to serve you for a while. Right. 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 And I feel like the, and this was another point that I wanted to talk about is like, does change get easier as you become more comfortable with change? I, think I would say totally. so, yes. Yeah. From, from my personal experience, I would call myself a change junkie 
I like I require a constant change, like, consistent change. There's few things in life that I'm consistent with. Change is one of them, <laughs> <laughs> as showcased by the different room I'm in, yeah. <laughs> from the usual. Um, but for how long, right? Yeah. Um, it's never been hard for me to to initiate change and to go through with it. There have been challenges with it, sure. Mostly when, like I said, I changed in a way that didn't resonate with me. Um, but I would say, yes, resistance makes generally everything much more difficult than it needs to be. <laughs> <laughs> was there ever a time, I'd like to ask you to this question, was there ever a time where the change was not worth it? Like in the end? I might be living in that right now. <laughs> yeah, we'll know in a few months. Yeah, yeah. What, keep, keep what's that? Are you talking about your marriage, Chase? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> He's uh, recently married. <laughs> He's... <laughs> yeah, yeah. It yeah. wasn't worth the change. <laughs> no, not at all, Olivia. I'm talking about the job, but we'll see. <laughs> I'll see my phone. We'll see. Wait, explain that more about your job. Um, so basically i've stopped um personal training being the number one thing that i do and now the number one thing that i do is instructional design with personal training on the side um and for me yeah that's a big change and that's an environmental change right like that's an external uh, stuff around me is changing um due to internal drives and values changing but um you know this is in real time a, you get to see as the weeks go on, I'll be able to gauge if this is correct change, if it's fulfilling change, having done a bunch of uh, spiritual work, you know, getting real with myself, um, having done a lot of that, I, I intend to hold that up while I um, live more aligned with the lifestyle that so many people are trying to escape. I'm just kind of jumping into it. And, uh, and then we'll see if that change is good or bad. Cause I'm not afraid to, uh, to change again. Cause like, that's it. I have changed and it, it becomes easier, but there's still certain scary things like, like, um, like ca career change. Like for me, it, it is kind of scary to do the thing that most people find not scary. Like for me, normal is operating small businesses and like doing your own thing and carving your own path. And it's almost for me, it's almost punk rock to do the thing that nobody else considers change, you know, <laughs> which, which, which I think speaks to your point. Like maybe the, the new change for you is the hardest change. Uh, mm. You know, like, like Mitchie, I'm sure you work with people in fitness who can't change their diet, but have changed their career five times, <laughs> you know, stuff <laughs> like that. Like you kind of, right. there's different change muscles. Well, yeah, and you're spot on with that. And it's also because when we want when we want to change, we try and do stuff that we've already tried before because it worked then. But it's like, no, like that's not actually changing, like trying something that already worked. Like changing is looking at something ass backwards and doing that. You know what I mean? Actually, I don't elaborate on that. Okay. So <laughs> let's say, let's say your nutrition, uh, and I'll relate this to fitness and nutrition, um, as well. Cause <laughs> that's your role. So the, <laughs> the thing is it's, and, and like you said, it's just so much more relatable unless I let like, dude, I'm going to end up sounding super woo woo and all that if I go the other direction. So I got to stay anchored through fitness. Yeah, you're right. That's my job. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Uh, so let's say that something in nutrition has worked for them for so long, whether that's a certain amount of calories they've been eating or whatever, and then they've hit a plateau and they're like, oh, well, back in the day, I used to just cut my calories by 250 if I wanted to uh, lose weight or get out of a plateau. And they try that and it's not working. So it, if we wanted to look at it from ass backwards there, then what we would do is increase their calories by 250 rather than mm -hmm. decrease them. And so by increasing them, then we'll probably see like they're gaining muscle now. And then we can go to that 250 calorie like cut or deficit afterwards. But to first start out by going to something that you've tried and it's worked before, I'm not saying that's a bad thing because it might work again. But if it doesn't, 
don't keep trying to do that, you know, like do the opposite of that. And I think you'll be surprised at what would actually come from it. Yeah. Counterintuitiveness is a formidable, uncommon and really useful skill to have the, to apply the big, to life. The big barrier though, with that counterintuitive uh, approach to making changes, you know, making new changes that, that don't come intuitively. Hence the name counterintuitive. The big yeah. barrier there is belief. Like I had to, <laughs> you know, I had to do this with myself. Like, you know, like we said, like getting married and you talk about things like, um, you know, buying a house and stuff. And then there are parts of you that like truly need to believe that that is possible in order for you to consider making a giant change like that. You know, like it's easy to uh, be a, a growing into your late twenties and just becoming a, a damn adult. And like, there needs to be a certain day when you believe that you could be a homeowner. A you know? dad, a dad <laughs> yeah, is what you're saying. Yeah. Where you could <laughs> be a dad, you know? And, and once you, once you say I can be a dad, you're never coming back. <laughs> but uh, yeah, you, you gotta, I think with that counterintuitive change, it does speak really in terms of the calories though, man, like convincing people to eat more, to get in better shape. Like that's so counterintuitive and it's hard. The hardest thing is getting people to believe that or in, in business, like that doing less is going to make you more productive because you're just like grinding your gears, not really doing productive work, staying busy, like truly believing that um, for me, like, like, I made more money and, and had more success in my fitness business when I stopped making so many YouTube videos and working so hard. And I'm like, oh, I, it just took, it was so hard to believe that. You know, how do you gain the belief to change counterintuitively? You got to take the leap of faith, first of all. Or you can use empirical data, I guess, and believe that instead and then try it. <laughs> That is true. There is empirical data usually. Well, at least for some things, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, and I think the main thing from that, like you were talking, Chase, like if you do try something and it goes fucking horribly, now you have that wisdom of things that don't work. Like that's just as important as you finding out something that works is you finding out something that doesn't work. Like there was like two years where I was tracking every biometric. I told you guys that the ring, the whoop strap, like everything, my sleep, my, like my, my, my heart rate, like my heart rate variability. So anyways, there was two years where every month I did something new. Like I had all pretty controlled variables around everything besides like one or two things that I would switch every month. For example, like one of the months I did a 21 hour fast every day and, uh, and a high fat diet. Like, uh, and, and so I did that for a month. That month did not turn out as I planned, you know, like, <laughs> dude, but, but, but I noticed like after the first couple of months when I was trying these things out and getting really horrible data back, I realized like, Hey, this is all really valuable data. Cause like when my clients ask me, Hey, what do you think about a 21 hour fast? I can not only provide them with the science, but I can also provide them with like the experience that I've tried. And so all of those things, a lot of them went really, really horribly. But just like to loop it back around to the point is the wisdom you gain from doing those things, from just changing, it's so worth it. Yeah. Wolfgang, okay, yeah. you look like you got something. It makes me think of uh, how I lost most of my hair. <laughs> <laughs> Elaborate. I know. Looking, <laughs> what's that? It was the high fat diet, or the, or, or the <laughs> was it the hours of fast? Uh, when I lived in the UK for about a year, uh, and this goes into like those uh, possibly changes you regret, right? Uh, turns out the environment there, you know, the stress from whatever, and the water in that town being not particularly amazing, uh, and the food I was eating at the time, I noticed like this area of my head just started to go away. And I was like, this is not something I'm going to live with. So I went back home to Romania and I just hunkered down and started researching the fuck out of hair, like regeneration for like, well, that was 2018. And technically I'm still doing it and it's the best it's ever been. 
But did, but, who did you learn from? Uh, who are the main people you learned from? Was Ben Greenfield one of them? No, it was just everything like I could get my hands on on the internet and stuff. And the biggest thing was getting past that bullshit layer of, oh, it's all your genes. Uh, if you're going bald, you're just going bald. You're just going to have to deal with it. And I'm like, no, <laughs> I'm going to get my fucking hair back. <laughs> and I was like, no, it has to be tweaks in diet. It has to have to do with the fucking nutrients you put in your body. It has to do with all these things. So I started looking at that. And then I started testing things just like, like you did with your yeah. one month thing. And I, I was like, okay, what if I put this thing in? What if I try these nuts thing? What if I, <laughs> what if I try this type of food? And, you know, lo and behold, my head starts fucking regenerating. And then I'm no like, way. okay, let's look at shampoos. Let's look at this. Let's look at that. Um, and the biggest one was sugar because that's true, really? which I didn't know about. I don't know that sugar increases your estrogen until I was researching the hair. And every time I would go on like a, like a two week, like eating some candy or whatever every day, like a binge, uh, and my hair would start being like, oh, I'm kind of flimsy again. And I'm like, fuck, okay, that was not do that. But you would that binge would and then you would wake up in bed with like a just a mop full of hair that's falling out of your head. <laughs> no, but you would start seeing the, the hair like become more brittle and stuff. It like start thinning yeah. again. And it's like that's not that's not okay. Um and it's mostly it just pissed me off that people are always like, oh, take this pill and take this thing and apply this to your head. And it's like, look at what you're fucking eating, look how much stress you have in your <laughs> life, first and foremost. <laughs> <sighs> hey how much does that remind you of the fitness and nutrition industry chase yeah <laughs> you know, you know you what take this pill man you're gonna burn so much fat if you swallow this pill <laughs> dude that's why i'm that's getting everywhere out. right i i just, just couldn't make money doing the the hard thing man it, it's hard oh. to it's hard to scale truth man because it's so much <laughs> relying on just... people to uh it, it's it relies on people to not face a powder or potion but to just face themselves you know something i think about all the time in regards to this is like people can know oh uh, they can know about energy balance and like knowing everything about it is great and then someone's going to sell you a pill that like magically cures your your energy balance deficiencies or are you like with that knowledge, because like knowledge without any action is not doing anything like that's just a party trick. So with your knowledge of energy balance, you have to change your behaviors to reflect that because the alternative ways just never last long term. Just to like you said, because the change that worked for you today is not the same change that works for you in a year from now. So like when the pill stops working, you actually didn't get any skills that are going to help you change even more because now you actually, that's a, that's a deteriorating change because you changed in a way that was easy. And now that, that decreases your ability to change in the future in a way that is productive. We're going to get canceled out of this zoom call. I'm going to start a new one. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm good. Cause I, I don't know what to say. Half half time. That's, that's good. Half time, dude. I'm just going Eminem over here. beautiful <laughs> i get all worked up about ideas man hell yeah <laughs> i start like i wonder what olivia thinks because like i when i'm in here just having meetings and like talking to i mean it was bad when i would do like five fitness calls back to back because like by the end <laughs> of each one i'm just like yelling in a very positive way <laughs> but like, like I'm, amped up <laughs> like by the end of like i'll do like four fitness calls in a row and like by the end i'm just like do you see how this is a like, i'm just like screaming at them in a positive way <laughs> oh man that's so relatable <laughs> gonna, yeah so I'm relatable Italian blood. um two things one of them is i feel like i'm about to drop some fucking arcane knowledge like they might be coming after me after this one <laughs> let's do um, it which is one of the biggest things for my hair story 
was somebody like a friend of the family just one day is like you know what you should try you should crush um i can only think of the german for it which is anti-baby pillin <laughs> <laughs> anti-baby pillin <laughs> the birth control you should oh, okay take, you should crush say. like a couple yeah, like birth control name. pills yeah that the german is amazing sometimes like schmetterling that means butterfly that's my war cry that's how i make people afraid um <laughs> <laughs> Um, you should crush some birth control pills into your shampoo and just use that over time. And I shit you not, it was like fucking, it like amplified what I was doing by like tenfold. So you crushed birth control pills into yeah, your shampoo. And it, and it had to do with the hormones or whatever the fuck those pills do, right? For men, at least. I don't know if it works for women. But and she was like, this friend of the family was like, yeah, I heard that. I was like, Chris, I heard some crazy grandma in Canada is doing that and do, tell, doing that to people and like they're getting the hair back. And I'm like, yeah, fuck it. What do I got to lose at this point? And that was that was amazing. But that why I said that is um, two things. One is, can you do change that you regret? Even though I gave that as, as an example, I don't regret go, ever going to the UK. I don't regret all of that because. It got me literally what I am here today. It got me into photography. It got me into everything that I'm doing today. Um, so that was just a part of the, the story that was like, you know, uh, the challenge of change that I had to prevail through. Um, so can change be regretful? I think that's up to you as a person to figure out if that's going to be something you're willing to regret or not, which let that sink in and think about it. And I'll talk about it in a later episode, because I think that's a powerful statement is um, you're going to accept that regret or not in your life. Uh, and the second thing is, this makes me wonder what are the elements of change if we were to break it down and based on the amazing speech that Chase just gave one is, I would say one is knowledge. And the second one is applying that knowledge so knowledge, action. And I would also add resonance to it, but I want to hear your guys' thoughts. What are the, what's the e- equation of change? I love the knowledge and action. I also love that when you were talking about candy, Mitchy started eating chocolate. <laughs> Dude, when so, we're talking about sugar i was like i got some dark chocolate right next to me so I'm there like, you go easy environmental change <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. man okay so so change right it's specific change takes intention where um i think i think a great ingredient is learning what you want to do a great ingredient I think, I think what, what you make a distinction in here, Wolfgang, is conscious or unconscious change. Because even if you bring regret into analyzing change, that brings like reflection into it. So maybe I would say conscious for this. That's yeah. the distinction. Yeah. So if we're doing conscious change, but yeah, all conscious change is based on your subconscious. Everything you do is based on your subconscious. So, so you're saying it's not conscious? I think it's both, <laughs> but That's... it could help break them down at least for a little bit before Wait, we so go what full were circle. Your elements, Chase, your elements were intention. Was that one of them? I think, okay, so if we're talking about conscious change that's actually going to be valuable, I think intention is a good ingredient and reflection is a good ingredient. So, aside from like knowledge and application, I think there's also, what do you intend to get out of this? And then reflect and be like, what actually happened? And there, when we talk about, if we want to talk about the re- re- regret element too, I think that's just more on outlook. Like, are you going to look at this positively, even if it went wrong, so that you know not to fuck up in the same way in the future? Or yeah, are you going to look differently? At this, yeah, fuck up in a new way. Like, there are a million ways to fuck up. And if you just keep doing that, you're going to, you're going to, you know, if you go in with the right intent, you're going to find the good ways that end up not fucking up. Fuck so yeah. I, <laughs> fuck yeah. What do you think, Mitchie? <laughs> I, ingredients to change. 
Okay. Ingredients to change. I would have to say number one has to be led with mindfulness, like you being present with whatever situation is there, because I don't think you can like recognize a time for change or recognize like getting comfortable or too comfortable if you're not mindful, like if you're not present, because you can kind of just be going through the motion of just doing something if and like even if you hate it or not if you're not present then you're not going to recognize how much you dislike doing whatever you're doing so i think being like present, your day job being, yeah exactly so being present being mindful is the first one i would have to say number two is you have to be open-minded like to anything to any situation and then i think number three is um like instinctual or um no intuitive i like that word intuitive a little bit better because when you're implementing change it's personalized to you so like if it didn't work for someone else it doesn't mean that it's not going to work for you that's and so you have to be um like what was it it wasn't intentional it was uh you said intuitive yeah, intuitive. So, so you have to be feeling inside of yourself because the answer is there. If you sit quietly or if you try and, but some, like sometimes the answer is not the answer that we want to hear, that our ego wants to oh, hear, yes. you know, like, and so for us to be open-minded enough to be able to understand what that answer is, um, like if it, like it can be as simple as when you're in the gym and you're present and you recognize Hey, like I am not getting as much gains. I'm not having as much fun. I feel like I'm plateauing. And then if you can be open-minded enough to do the opposite and listen to what your body actually wants, if it's like, oh, I want to do one to four reps now instead of eight to 12, let's try that. And so your body has the answer there or your soul or your spirit, if you want to get woo-woo into it. Um, but yeah, so I think those are my, my three is being present, being mindful, being open-minded and then being, um, I'm not even going to remember the word again, intuitive. <laughs> intuitive. It's the food poisoning. I swear. <laughs> yeah, it does shit to you. Stop eating chicken nandos or whatever it was. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that's it. That's it. Just so we don't get sued. Yeah. Yeah, no, think- we will we will not get sponsored by Chicken Endos though, because I will say this right now, it fucking sucked. <laughs> those, if you guys don't know, that's like the the fast food chain in the UK. Like everybody is like, it's like a cultural phenomenon that and I taught and I ate some of it, and it was just like, this is mid. <laughs> this is mid. <laughs> so anyway, continue. No, Mitchie. Um, I think that uh I think that honesty is an important part of of confronting your intuitive actions like like so okay uh, it's just gonna it's gonna be known in this podcast that i'm obsessed about the enneagram right now but in studying the enneagram there is a healing component of like what everybody on the enneagram regardless of your number needs to hear which it's just a personality typing system based in these numbers but um you know, it's rooted in these fears and what everyone needs to hear in order to heal. And at the root of their healing message, there's an element of everyone being okay with the present. Um, yes. cause like, yeah, cause all these fears are kind of rooted in, in kind of fear of the future in shame of the past in, you know, uncertainty of the present, but it's, it's in each number, there's a healing message of like, you know, for a seven, it's like, you will be taken care of, like, calm down thinking about the future or as a two, like you don't need to be needed to be wanted. So like calm down about like pleasing everybody in the room right now. Um, the present moment is okay. But right, what's yeah. a five? Do you know a five? Yeah. So a five is, I don't know. I don't necessarily know the healing message for five, but it's going to align a lot with the seven. <laughs> okay sorry everyone but it's gonna because they're, they're gonna be um they're gonna be fearful of the future and acquiring um information resources data to help them in this uh uncertain future so it's 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 almost along the lines of you have enough you know you already have enough you don't have to acquire so much more knowledge facts 
data. Oh, that's deep. Yeah, I was the five. <laughs> I took the test after you sent it out, and uh, and I was the five, and I I vibe with that for sure. Yeah, Mitch, you have enough, man. <laughs> <laughs> you you have enough. You are enough. Got to stop seeking those those external factors. You don't have to try the high fat diet again. You are, you have enough. Dude, you had you enough did. of it. Dude, you'd have to pay me money to try that. Again. <laughs> but but the, the cool thing about these healing messages for everyone based on where they're at is that once you can get over the redundant kind of uh, record player on loop in your head that's always trying to do the same thing all the time, once you can get yeah. over that, then you can be present to oh, I set a New Year's resolution to stop eating donuts for breakfast and I'm literally on autopilot eating donuts for breakfast. How did that happen? It's because you're not, you're not here. Like you're not actually here eating the donuts. You're How figuring out the problem. Right. <laughs> uh, right. That's uh, one of my favorite exercises is uh, auditing your everyday thoughts. And just after a while, just seeing how much they're just the fucking same thing every day like writing down your your most like like most of your thoughts not like obviously not on right every day but the most like the biggest ones that are always in your head right or to i don't know if you want to write them all day just write them all day i don't care it's just whatever it takes <laughs> um and this is a, a swift reminder because in those healing messages there is also the uh the um uh, aspect of you're good enough mm -hmm. you're already enough you're good enough which mitch actually picked up on um because he mentioned it a bit ago and that is a reminder to everyone that when changing it doesn't have to come from a place of lack you are already good enough and now go do the thing from already being good enough don't, don't try try not to change because you feel like when you make the change, you'll be good enough. I'll be better when. It's only going to make you feel like you'll be better when. Next thing, next thing, next thing, next thing, next thing. And you'll never be better. Because you'll always be better when. And you'll never be better now. Yeah. And it makes, it makes change so much more fun. And I'm saying this from like a personal perspective. When you are rooted in self-love. like. Yes when you're changing and you don't love yourself fully, because like you said, of being like, you'll, you'll love yourself when, oh man, change is not fun that way. <laughs> and it's never yeah. enough that way. Like, I think yeah. the only way it's enough if, is if you're already enough. If you believe you're already enough, if you realize you're already enough, right? Fuck the, fuck the fake it till you make it be real until you remember you're already good enough. You just got to figure that out got to recognize it yeah i mean i think that if you have a, a like a if you get down and like like really think about your values and like what you would like to manifest into a life into the world whatever you want to create like go into that knowing that where you are is enough and then change things for the better from there and just always be pushing things better like and, and there's a question like why even make things better because i feel like there's this really deceptively dubious thing that happens with a lot of messaging that I'm on board with. Like there's a lot of people that are, you know, talking about like loving yourself where you're at, even though like you have a bunch of debt and you are, you know, maybe your body is like not necessarily thriving in a healthy way and like all these different aspects. And they're like, you got to love yourself. And I'm like, yes, yes. You got to love yourself no matter where you're at physically, mentally, but like, don't use that self-love <laughs> as an excuse to be complacent. Yes. You know, there's a really dangerous thing that I feel like people are like, oh, you know, um, sh like she's promoting this message and she's this way. And, and I'm almost that way too. And it makes me feel good. So maybe I'm okay. And it's like, yeah, you're okay. You're good. Everything's cool. But like, think about your values. Like, what do you want to manifest into this world? And like, just because you're fine where you're at doesn't mean that, that there's no need for change. That right. It might not be better. Because remember, change is constant. You're going to ride the wave or not. Which way are you changing? Like, grab it and, and, you know, accept it for what it is and push it to where you 
you want it to go. Yeah. And I've seen this uh, happen in the life of people around me where I could sense that it's like everything you're doing in life right now, you need like this specific lesson to put you onto the next level in life, to, to, to push you forward and to grow as a person. And sometimes I'll be like telling friends, like, you should look into this thing or you should consider this concept. You should do this, right? And the ones that have always been the most resistant to those things or like not even giving it the time of day, I shit you not like clockwork, like two months later, something horrible happens in their life that teaches them that exact lesson. So when I say change is a force of nature, I don't just mean evolution and all this stuff. I mean, I feel like there's something in, in the, the, in the particles of existence where life goes, no, no, you're going to learn today. <laughs> you're going to learn, bitch, if you want to or <laughs> <Yeah>. not. <laughs> So basically what I've learned now is that Chase is our dad here. Chase is rocking the dad life. We, we got me as the bozo doing some sort of training physically. And we got a psychic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I make no claims. <laughs> so anyone, uh, we'll start putting out our, uh, our discount code soon. If you're looking for any of these and we can set you up with, uh, with whatever you want. It's the, it's the one shop stop here. <laughs> I feel like Basically. what you just said could be turned into a really awesome uh, piece of art. Like these three concepts, the dad, the fitness dad, the fitness bozo, or just the dad, the fitness bozo, and the psychic quotation marks again, no claims uh, of any such <laughs> things. Um, so I don't know if you're a really creative individual and you happen to hear upon this, uh, just contact me or us because i would love to to see your your vision of this concept and maybe it'll become like some official thing or would you sit next to me as i become creative yes (laughs) yes (laughs) yes and i would love every moment i'm envisioning (laughs) like a best dad ever mug and there's like a (laughs) there's like a string hanging from it that has like a book and then another one that has (laughs) has like a barbell or something (laughs) <laughs> and then and then and then we're holding like some kind of or magic cards or a globe in front of us oh my god i have a borch idea which you can just entirely bleep if you feel is going to get stolen but i have to say it now yeah. is having the the hamlet thing i feel like this probably was done already but if it wasn't it's ours now trademark yeah <laughs> uh the hamlet thing with the skull in the like hand that's how trademarks a- work you just call trademark and, and yeah. you got it I call Amen. it like it's shotgun, you know, this fucking <laughs> exactly, exactly um, how it works. So you have this, this barbell in your hand. Hmm. Do I really want to commit to that? Yes, I do. Hold on. Whoa. <laughs> All right. We're getting a visual representation here. Well, you got a barbell on hand. I'm, I'm going to be impressed if he brings a barbell over right now. All right, so oh, he's okay. a, he's a, he's a dumbbell. He has a dumbbell. He's got a dumbbell. So he's so holding a four hundred pound dumbbell in his one hand, guys. Yes. Yeah, okay, it's getting hot. Let me speak. <laughs> um, and it's just to lift or not to lift. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I wonder if that has been done. That's good. <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> oh man! All right change committed just it's like happening. i committed to that bit commit to it yeah you got to commit you got to go all the way and another quick hot extra tip patreon only not really um <laughs> <laughs> but do check out patreon uh, i'm sure you'll find many useful things it's a it's, it's a it's a patreon in progress just like this podcast yeah. um so you can be part of it and and tell us give us your ideas give us your your wisdom give us your psychicness uh, your bozoness. You know this. Um, wait, this could be good. This could be good for Patreon because if if we take up the theme of like talking about a question, that could be good. That could be a good place for people to go talk about it. Yeah, you know the Patreon could be the spot where we're like, hey, you know, is change possible? What's your story? What's your shebang? I mean, maybe someday we have enough patrons that like we can even ask ahead of time, and then they can let us know. So yeah. that yeah, you know, yeah, that'd be the community. Sweet. 
<laughs> there's community there. I think we'll get there. I, I have faith that people will resonate with this. But here's the hot tip. And this is up to your discretion, Chase, if you actually want to make it a fucking Patreon exclusive bit. All right. Um, willpower, as, you, as some people know, is a big thing in, in changing. A big aspect of change. What does this mean? Well, I'm going to use a, uh, a story from one of my favorite mentors, Owen Cook. He says, you go to the restaurant and the waiter puts a basket of bread in front of you on the table because that's what restaurants do. Every, and you don't want to eat bread. Every second that basket of bread is on that table, your willpower is going down like a fucking meter in a video game. So next thing you know, your willpower has been burned for today and you're eating bread and you feel like shit and you're going nowhere in life. Uh, not as dramatic. <laughs> Naturally, what ready. you do is you ask the waiter, hey, can you take away the bread? Then you save up your willpower in the process. So try to make a system in your day to day where you only use your willpower, if at all, uh, you only use your willpower for the things that matter. And always strengthen that muscle of willpower. It's your, I believe willpower is your prefrontal cortex, something like that. You guys might know that better than me. Um, strengthen that bitch. Work it out. <laughs> Lift it up. Yo, um, it. I don't know, whatever it takes. The here, willpower, baby. <laughs> here's the, uh, so, so, you know, like, um, in Mario, when you know you're you're the small version of Mario, and you eat a mushroom and you get stronger, yeah. So the <laughs> there's probably a better analogy for that. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> say like your willpower is running low, and you're little Mario. The the mushroom that you need is uh, want power. Is so the the whatever whenever you're depleted on willpower. And I read this in a book. Um, I think it was, I honestly think it was Bigger, Leaner, Stronger by Mike Matthews. But he had this concept of when your willpower gets low, like the kind of the fuel that's going to lift that up a little bit might be want power, which is like all of these wills are happening because there's a want on the other end of it. So it's like, you know, when it's the end of the day mm -hmm. and you, you, actually want to say no to the bread but like why do you you need willpower to do it but like why do you want like what do you want what is that want behind like is it a want to feel good tomorrow is it a want to lose 20 pounds is it a want to prove to yourself that you can keep a promise to yourself that you're not going to eat the bread like what is the want and that's going to fuel the will but ultimately the willpower does get lower but like the, the little boost could be to add the want power to it hmm yeah, I feel that. And what I feel like we're kind of talking about the battle between which I see so often, not only in my life, but with my clients as well, is the difference between motivation and discipline. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Like motivation, a lot of people rely on motivation for change. Um, and motivation might get you like to start for sure. But at least from my personal experience, man, motivation is very fleeting. Like it leaves you very quickly and you don't know when it's going to come and when it's not. But the thing that gets you through to show up at the gym or doing whatever you're doing when you don't want to do it, the same with the bread basket is discipline is like, oh, like I'm, I'm going to make sure this bread basket doesn't even touch my table. Like that's discipline, you know, like, cause, cause willpower is fleeting. So like, how are you going to like match that or to battle with that? And I like, I feel like discipline is huge in that. Yeah. I think, I think discipline gets built with willpower. Of <laughs> course, there's different ways to build it, but I think they're yeah. a bit connected for sure. Um, and not to just leave people hanging the way you build willpower and strengthen it every day is every time you get the opportunity to go that extra mile, to do that extra difficult thing that like, is like every time you find yourself being like, should I do this extra little bit of effort to get this thing done? Or like, eh, just whatever. Whether it's for you or for someone else, do it. Do the extra thing every single time. Not only does your willpower strengthen, your confidence gets boosted. It's, like, it's just an upward spiral. You get into the winner effect, which we can talk about at some point, which just makes you just an absolute champion. Uh, and quickly, just because this is fun, to put it into a gaming uh, analogy, the motivation and, and discipline is um, motivation is your uh, super meter. Motivation is, is the rage of the Titans in God of War 2. 
is the mm-hmm. is the you know l3 r3 ah, for like two, 20 seconds you just go ballistic and destroy everything and then you know kratos goes back to normal and but he's still a disciplined warrior and he's gonna fuck shit up because but that that motivation is that explosive willpower which when you get it fucking use it do something right. explosive but otherwise when you have the discipline you're still gonna kick ass just along the way for sure that that Dude. consistency that discipline that everything that chase has talked about in the past that is just like <laughs> mamma mia mamma mia <laughs> dude but it's it's everything that everyone's talking about man the, the video game analogy to i've been playing mario kart man that makes me think so much about you go into star mode like you're still going towards the same goal you're just going faster and yes. then when it wears off you have to keep going towards the goal like people are always like how do i stay motivated it's like you don't have star power forever you keep chasing yeah. the goal and have when you found cheat off, codes tell us about it <laughs> yeah if you found out i mean honestly the cheat codes probably like some sort of steroids over- yeah it's or, like steroids or adderall. and cocaine <laughs> or adderall and cocaine and all that oh man yeah. but like people say how do you stay motivated and it's like you don't and you just stay you stay even though you're not motivated. You the just stay stays stay. there, even if motivated isn't. It? <laughs> and um, dude, last thing, because you the the what we are describing with why you need motivation and why you need willpower and why you need discipline is like to go back to the beginning of this conversation, that is all the harder way to change. Like all of this is about changing in a way that is difficult. <laughs> right? Yeah. <laughs> yes. And I would say, it, I would put it this way, uh, focus on leaving orbit. So, you know, when, when a ship has to, has to leave the planet, all, well, not all, but most of that fuel is used to break orbit, to leave the planet itself. So there's going to be that heaviness, that difficult, that challenge to break orbit. And once you're in space, once you're out of orbit, you can freely move however you wish. With your thrusters hmm. so yeah, wh- change is difficult but i think is only difficult temporary and it's yes. going to become easier as you go because it's going to be easy to say no to that bread basket once yes. you have changed like you won't need willpower someday yes and to put that into a more like biological scientific approach uh neural pathways look into those yeah so yeah. building those neural pathways is breaking orbit that's the difficult part building those habits but just like a ship, you just keep going. Uh, build that discipline and willpower and everything. Build systems that make it as easy as fucking possible for you to make a change you want to make in your life. And if you have something on your fucking bucket list, go do it at the expense of what you might lose monetarily or otherwise. Because when you come back from that experience on your bucket list, you're going to have so much new knowledge and willpower and confidence and everything that you didn't even fucking imagine could exist. And you're going to kick ass at rebuilding whatever you lost along the way. That experience is always worth it. So Mm. stay shifty. (laughs) Mic drop. That was good. (laughs) It's true. (laughs) Mitchie, what are you thinking? What am I thinking? Honestly, I'm thinking about how much fucking hair Ofgang has on his head. <laughs> and I cannot like he has he has longer hair, more hair than all of us here. Yeah. All of them, all three of us am- combined. And I think it's yeah. amazing that he was like, No, I'm not gonna take no for an answer. I'm gonna start putting freaking birth control in my head. And uh and it worked out. <laughs> hey, besides the sugar and birth control crushing of the shampoo, what else did you find work for you? Like any other major ones? Um, right now. Because we can at least give our listeners something to, to take from this tangible. So I guess the point of this topic can be hair growth. <laughs> <laughs> so hair that's... restoration. <laughs> hair restoration. Growth. Can you imagine this is the title and scope of the podcast? It's like how to restore your hair. First it comes down to belief. All right. <laughs> yes, well, it does. I was about perfect. to say that. Perfect. If that's um, our title, then we got to give it to him. We got number one as sugar. You got to limit your sugar intake because of the estrogen levels. We're not quite sure the science on that. And we're not quite sure the science. Next. 
on number two, which is birth control. We've yet to see see the science on this either, but we know it works from experience for, hey man, for this, one the, guy. We've got for all I'm, uh, <laughs> yeah, but, and it's the full grandma, of yeah, and but, the grandma's results as well. Yes, okay. we need to interview that grandma. We need to find her in Canada, hunt her down, find her, talk to her, interview her yeah. for this. Um, I would say the frustrating part of it was that science or what is perceived as science when it comes to head was just, you're fucked. Don't change your lifestyle. Just keep going. Yeah, just be bald, bitch. Whatever, loser. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what I'm doing right now is being smart and realizing I'm not going to put uh, everything that my hair needs in my day-to-day food. One, because it's fucking insanely diff- like complex like to get the specific things, and I do not have the knowledge uh mitch or chase might do um but so i I supplemented so the biggest thing that helped me was biotin oh Uh, it's something that i learned from male models they were like it's like this is how i take care of my head i take biotin pills i do this i do like oatmeal whatever the fuck masks i don't do masks because because you're oh. too masculine for that. Like, imagine just oatmeal in this head. No, that's not happening. Or he's not comfortable with his feminine yet. Uh, <laughs> it's, that's that's it. just, that's to it. get that out of my head is a nightmare. Um, so yeah. So right now I just I just take a <laughs> a supplement of it has keratin, zinc, copper, niacin. I don't know what that is. Uh pantotensira. I think that's Swedish for something. Uh, vitamin B- B6 and biotin. And I think that's all there is on it. But, and I also take omega threes like every day because that's just omega three. That's fucking good for everything. Um, and yeah, supplements fucking help. Get yeah. the right supplement for your needs. Uh, not the one that burns your fat, but the one with actual things in it. You want to go further? Look at the things on the back. Don't even buy the supplement and ask yourself, where the fuck does this thing come from? Like for real. Oh, this thing has ginseng. What the fuck is ginseng? I don't know. Where, where do they grow that? What is that? Is that a fruit? Is that a plant? Is that an animal? I don't know. But f- figure it out. Take it to the next step. Whatever your, your goal is, there's ways. Start with believing. Remember, it's not a should, it's a must. Would versus could. Can you do something? Yes. Will you? That depends on you. And if you won't, then you just can't in the first place. <laughs> Take that as you will. Yeah, <laughs> yeah true you. that. And the same way you go about your hair products is the same way everyone should go about anything that they consume during their day. Like, what is in this that I'm putting in? And the reason why me having food poisoning right now is the is me being ignorant to that. And like I'm I I had a really good idea. I had like so so it could have just been placebo because I was like, I'm gonna eat this and I didn't ask them what oil they used to like cook it in. But anyways, I'm on a rant now. But yeah, like everyone should be scouring like the ingredients labels of everything and if you don't want to do that that's what you got me for so <laughs> yeah yeah so, call so for you, some coaching so you, you you hire a personal trainer and take a picture of what you're eating but no it's really easy to find out what it is if you do do that due diligence of like googling or researching what ginseng is or what this is and what and and if it if it doesn't sound right to you when when you see it on the ingredients list, there's a good chance that it's not. Yeah, yo, that's something I hope that rubs off on me from you, Mitch, throughout this the the creation of this airship that is this <laughs> podcast is because I do want to be more mindful with what I eat, and I absolutely still put trash in my body uh, on a fairly regular basis. Not every day, but you know, a few times a week it happens, and that's definitely something I want to improve with. And I hope to just absorb knowledge and do whatever it takes for that as well. So that's yeah. something I'm working on changing. Yeah, man. And, and I think too, like, like you're, you're saying how you got to keep an eye on everything that comes into your body. And you also have to keep an eye on everything that comes into your mind too. Mm. Like if you're like, you know, someone's yes. out there listening to us, like keep an eye on that, man. You know, make sure that you're not <laughs> eating garbage or consuming garbage ideas. Delete from- Twitter. Yeah, I'm gonna tell you right now. Just delete Twitter, or you might have to stop listening to this podcast too. Maybe we are we are full of shit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> Honestly. Man, I may be bullshitting, but I am not lying. <laughs> All right. Well, okay. So, so here's something. We don't have Zoom Premium. I think we're at a good point. I think so. Call, I think we can call this an episode, episode one. in episode one. On hair loss. <laughs> on hair yeah. loss. Yeah, and hair food poisoning. And, <laughs> and food poisoning. We'll come up with a concept for episode two over this week. And catch uh, us on the Patreon. Yeah. And if you can't catch us on the Patreon, Patreon, catch us on the flip side. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Change is yeah. possible. How would, uh, I'm, I'm sure you're probably going to plug this in, Chase, but how would one go to find us on Patreon? Links in the show notes. You know what? I don't even, Woo! I don't want to do, we're going to see how this goes. I don't want to do an intro or an outro. Like I just, I, I want to, you know, cause I'm, I'm going to have a zoom file on my computer. I just want to pop it in, throw on some effects. that's going to make everyone sound good. Roll some music, get into it, get out of it. You mean you don't want me. to put the speech from my, from the beginning that I made as like the <laughs> hype up to the podcast episode. <laughs> yeah, we, we might, we might make that the hype up to every podcast episode. <laughs> you know what? Just do it. Have my blessing, <laughs> or or we'll just list off the we'll we'll just have like a disclaimer to tell people to eat uh, more biotin at the beginning of every. Uh, That's it, and, and and crush uh, birth control pills. We're, we're going to head. be sponsored by birth controls at least <laughs> once. Mark my fucking words. Hey guys, so we are sponsored by birth control. <laughs> Please throw your head with birth control. <laughs> Call us. <laughs> Man, I'm surprised that's not... I'm surprised I've never heard of that. That's interesting. Yeah. I wonder what the actual science is behind it, too. Because obviously it's something. But um, but I, I kind of like it without the science. N- next week when we get on this call, Wolfgang's going to be surprised to me and Mitch. You're going to have so much hair and so Dude. few babies. <laughs> <laughs> and so few babies. <laughs> All right, dudes. Well, this has been great. Is there anything else we need to tell people before we hit the end button? I think they know if Um, if you want more of good stuff, like you just go into Patreon. We're not even going to tell you what's there because there's not much there yet. But it's it's going to be good. We're there. Uh, And if you want to look at us individually, then you can check our individual Instagrams and other things in the show notes and see what we're about by ourselves as well. I like it. Yeah, I think that's perfect. Yeah. And the most important thing and last thing I'll say is thank you. Ah, thank you. All right, we're out. Hitting the end button. Peace out, dudes. We did it. Fuck yeah. Yeah. Strong. <laughs> On to greatness. Good work, um, guys. <laughs> yeah, good shit. I'll talk to you guys later. We'll speak sure. to you beautiful people soon. <laughs>